The goals for the Millennium of Development, adopted in the year 2000 by the international community, have allowed strong mobilization on the matter of development-related issues and stopped the decrease of public funding for development. They have also allowed spectacular improvements in some specific areas, such as school education, maternal and child health, or the fight against communicable diseases. However, they had a few flaws. They were based on a very traditional approach to development, designed as a way to fill socio-economic gaps between southern and northern hemisphere countries, focusing mainly on poverty and areas of society. Let us not forget we had recently experienced decades of structural adjustments, which had led to a huge increase in poverty. There was also another flaw. They are based on a compartmentalized vision of the world. This approach mostly disregards the objectives and the study of links between objectives, how the way these objectives are connected. In 2015, the goals of sustainable development emerged in a radically different context where the way the world is divided becomes increasingly blurred with new powers emerging in the South. We no longer live in a binary world, but rather in a multiple pole world with powers emerging in the Southern Hemisphere. We live in a world where threats have been multiplied, where dangers are exploding, following a quantitative rather than qualitative period of growth, a kind of economic growth which has plundered natural resources, disrupted cycles, disrupted the climate in particular, a kind of growth which has accentuated disparities. As is shown in the graph, we, have, we are starting to exceed the limits of our planet in a number of fields. There is no solution, there is no backup plan. We need to rethink the models according to which our countries are developing obviously using energies, but also creativity and the technological and scientific revolution which is taking place. But that's an entirely different story. What does this agenda of sustainable development look like? It differs from the previous one by three main evolutions. First, a much clearer balance between the three pillars of sustainable development, the economic, the social and the environmental pillar, which we can see on the slide. The number of goals for sustainable development of our planet are, is much greater. Also, the agenda contains a much more exhaustive list of traditional objectives regarding poverty, health and school education. Goals have been added on the matter of global public assets, including the climate and the oceans, for instance. Others testify to the very important international debates taking place, for instance, the role played by governments or the fight against disparities. Add another important one on partnerships, because, as we speak, we know we must act together, together for the countries of the world, together for all the players, no matter where they come from, in order to build this agenda for sustainable development. The agenda is therefore much more exhaustive, but it also includes integrated goals in keeping with the growing complexity of the world. We need to integrate them, for instance, by building integrated cities uh, which are sustainable and bring together various issues such as environmental, society-related and economic issues. So then, why 17 goals for sustainable development? Well, first of all, to make sure nothing is left out. There have been many contributions, feedback from the fieldwork and lobbying work. Work. These objectives or goals reflect the countless contributions as well as the complexity of the world we live in. Therefore, there are a large number of subjects. On the other hand, eight goals for the Millennium of Development already seemed like a lot. Seventeen are an even greater number. We tried to keep it as low as possible. We ended up with 17, a somewhat weird number 
which shows that nothing should be taken for granted. 17 goals for sustainable development and also 169 targets. These targets show how ambitious the agenda is. Different kinds of, sub of targets, subjects, but also resources and means. Among the subject targets, one might mention the following one, universal and equal access to drinkable water at an affordable cost between now and 2030. Regarding resources, mobilizing financial resources to preserve the, bio preserve the biodiversity and ecosystems, not to mention the fact that some targets are highly ambitious and aim at getting transformative. Take target one of objective 10 on disparities, for instance. It explains that the income of the 40% of the population who are the poorest must increase faster, uh, faster than the average national income. This target is very demanding. Target 3 of Objective 15 regarding life on Earth. It requires that we live in a way that does not deteriorate land. It is an essential subject today. What should we think about this agenda? One should first underline the huge participation that led to its successful elaboration. The birth of this agenda is indeed a political agreement between close to 200 countries. Countless consultations and negotiations whereby few subjects were left out, although unfortunately culture is one of them. Emphasis was laid on areas which are key to sustainable development, such as the environment, often mentioned, but also the fight against disparities or the crucial topic of governance. Last, but not least, this agenda agenda is struggling to tell us a story. It exemplifies a change in paradigm. The binary framework between North and South is no longer in order. We live in a complex world. We need an integrated, a systemic vision, but also a positive vision of what mankind and its living environment might be in the future. This agenda is striving to lay the conditions for the future we could hope for, for mankind, and it relies on everybody participating and acting in a responsible way. Of course, the way it was designed and built is in danger of being criticized. The danger of SDG washing exists. Everything is SDG, we hear all the time. If everything is SDG, nothing is SDG. There is no longer, there is also also the danger, sorry, of picking goals based on no selection criteria, or without setting priorities, or when there is obvious contradiction, making choices which will not be optimal for the countries picking a goal without criteria. The goal has been set. But there is no roadmap, hence the need to lay down the roadmaps, a daunting task. Finally, the most crucial issue has not yet been addressed. How to fulfill this agenda in a context where resources are limited? The road we should take is not signposted. It will be difficult to find, if we can find it. That is and remains the crucial issue today. Does this road even exist? Fulfilling the agenda will lead to strong anthropic pressure. Will mankind be able to invent the roads that limit anthropic pressure? Shall we be able to fulfill the agenda while relieving the pressure? New models must be invented. Creativity is essential. New models which limit resource consumption. We must pave new ways, tap into existing ones, in the ones which have a different kind of relationship to nature. Ways such as the Buen Vivir from Latin America, ways such as those traced by symbiotic economy, being creative will help us build the agenda for sustainable development and to fulfill it in a context with limited resources. One last focus on indicators. Monitoring will be key to the success of this agenda. 241 follow-up indicators were set by the United Nations Statistics Committee. These are scalable indicators. They will benefit from progress made in the field of statistics sciences. They will improve in time. The indicators must be complemented by the various countries 
so that they match their characteristics and national backgrounds. A network was set up to take care of the follow-up and monitoring process. An annual high-level political forum will review the progress and a report will be presented every four years. The burning issue, however, regarding indicators is about statistics and producing statistics in the poorest countries. It is essential that we deal with the matter of reinforcing their capacity to produce statistics. These countries must be able to keep track of the progress, measure the indicators regarding the social, economic, political, environmental life before they can implement a sustainable development agenda.